I want to start by reading you an extract from a book that was written and published in the UK in 1977. I think you'll find it important. Quote, For over a century, doctors have known that if wires are poked into the brain and an electric charge passes through them, there will be different responses from different parts of the brain. A wire poked into one part will cause a leg to move. The same wire poked into another part of the brain will cause an arm to twitch. Fifty years ago, we knew that with the aid of electronic stimulation, doctors could induce pleasure, eradicate pain and recall memories previously lost. With electrodes in position, the patient can be controlled quite effectively from a distance. He can be made to eat, to sleep or to work. His appetite, heart rate, body temperature and other factors can also be monitored and controlled. This is still the quote from the book from 1977. Researchers have shown that gentle cats can be transformed into aggressive beasts if certain parts of their brains are stimulated. In one dramatic experiment, Dr. Delgado of the Yale University School of Medicine in America wired a bull with electrodes and then planted himself in the middle of a bullring with a cape and a small radio transmitter. The bull charged but was stopped by Dr. Delgado pressing a button on his transmitter. The ball screeched to a halt inches away from Dr. Delgado. Dr. Delgado reported that animals with implanted electrodes in their brains have been made to perform a variety of responses with predictable reliability as if they were electronic toys under human control. Similar exper experiments had even then been performed with human beings. The patients selected had all proved dangerous and had shown that they had uncontrollable tempers. Close quotes. And that's the end of the quote. I don't have to get permission to read that extract because it was from my second book, which was called Paper Doctors and was published in 1977 by Maurice Temple Smith in London. There are some reviews of the book on my website under the biography and contact button. Incidentally, by the way, talking of um, websites, I gather there's a website on the internet that's published old email addresses for me. I'm afraid those addresses haven't worked for 10 years, so please don't use them. Sadly, Paper Doctors has been out of print for years, and for the record, I loathed animal experimentation as much then as I do now. I'm delighted that the British government now here appears to have accepted that experiments on animals are pointless. Although I wrote all that in the 1970s, Delgado was working in the 1950s and the 1960s, and his work was just the beginning of a very complicated story that is only now coming towards its final chapters. Most people, and in that I include most doctors and most scientists, have never heard of Delgado's experiments and don't realise just how significant they were then and now are. It was Delgado and people like him who started the long, slow journey towards the control of the human body and human mind. There have, of course, always been two essentials for controlling people from a distance. First, you need a way to implant some sort of receiver in the human body. Over the years, the receivers available have got smaller and smaller. Today, people still think of microchips as being little things you can pick up and hold between your fingers, the sort of thing you might find in a mobile phone, for example. But some microchips are now way, way smaller than that. You can get a pile of the things on a fingernail. You could get one in a syringe and through the needle. You could get one in a spray and blow it up your nose. That's small. Not that anyone would want to inject a microchip into themselves, of course, though other people, I suppose, might like to do it for them. The second necessity is for a transmitter. And that's not difficult at all. You need a tall post of some kind, a flagpole or a tall building, or a pylon would do. And then you stick your transmitter on the top so that it can send out its messages over a wide area. That bit's easy. Something like a radio transmitter, or I suppose one of those things that sends signals to mobile phones. It would have to be a bit more sophisticated than the old mobile phone signals, of course. So that's all the equipment you need. 
a little chip in the body of the person you want to control and a transmitter to send the messages. If you were a mad doctor or a mad anybody else you, and you wanted to control an individual, it would be a doddle. You'd just tell them you were going to give them an injection to protect them against, I don't know, the flu or something. And in the syringe, there'd be a little receiver. And then you'd stick a transmitter on the roof of the house across the road from where they lived. And then you could send messages to make them do whatever you wanted them to do. You could make them sad or angry or happy or contented. You could make them run or fight or just spend all day in bed. Remember, that's what Dr. Delgado was doing over half, half a century ago. It's nothing new. Of course, if you wanted to do the same thing for lots of people, you need a lot of people to help you. Say you were a really bad person and you wanted to control a whole population, for example. You could make people do whatever you wanted them to do. You could make them go shoplifting or commit murder or, or vote for somebody or commit suicide or anything you wanted them to do. If you wanted a smaller population, you could make everyone stop wanting to have children. It would be terribly easy. Remember, Dr. Delgado was doing this over half a century ago. It's just that his receivers and transmitters were a bit cumbersome. He had to fasten the receiver onto the top of the uh, animal's head or the human's head and then use a transmitter that he held in his hand. If you wanted to do all this, you'd need to be very, very rich to start with, somebody with loads of money and lots of contacts. A billionaire, really, I suppose, and somebody with not too much in the way of morals. And you'd need something to inject into people. I suppose it would have to be a medicine or something. And then you'd need somebody who was good at software to help with all the transmitting and the receiving. And you'd need people with access to lots of tall poles or roofs where you could put the transmitter things. But none of that would be any good unless you had a reason for injecting people. You can't just go around injecting millions of people for no reason. Ideally, you'd need them all to be frightened of something so that they were dead keen to let you inject them. And then you could put your tiny receivers into the stuff that was being injected, go easily through the needle. Or you could squirt it up their noses or whatever you fancied. Or put it on anyway. But that would be a tricky thing to organise because you'd ideally need a threat of some kind. You, you could tell everyone they were going to get the plague or something if they didn't let you give them their wonderful antidote. I suppose that might work. But for that you'd have to have a big scare about something. And that wouldn't be possible because you'd need some experts to say there was a big scare coming or, or present when really there wasn't. So they'd have to make up something or find something and then exaggerate it. Or you could find somebody not very good at what they did, I suppose, and get them to make a forecast that terrified the life out of everyone. And then you'd have to keep people really scared. You could get all the media on your side. You could, I suppose, get people so scared that they were happy to put up with all sorts of rules and restrictions. And you could tell people that if they didn't do what you told them to do, then the scary thing, whatever it was, was going to get worse than ever. And you'd need some experts and advisors, preferably somebody who had links to the companies making the stuff you were planning to give people. And you, you could promise them all sorts of things. And you'd probably need some fairly greedy and some com and compliant politicians too. But it really wouldn't be possible to arrange all that, would it? And anyway, there's another problem, because you'd need to keep people separated so that you could make sure the messages you were transmitting reached the individual receivers. You'd have to have people standi standing several feet apart all the time, and there's no way you could get people to do that. So it couldn't possibly work, could it? Even if that's what somebody wanted to do. Thank you for watching An Old Man in a Chair and thank you for all your support and encouragement. Please copy and share the videos on Twitter and Facebook, from which I was never allowed to join. And put them on BitChute or any other platforms. Let's spread the truth. If you'd like to put on a translation, that would be absolutely great. If my videos disappear, then please go to my website to find out where you can see them. The transcripts of all my videos, including the growing number of banned ones, are always on my website www.vernoncoleman.com If you do have a bit of a brainstorm and visit mainstream media, 
put on messages asking others to watch these videos to find the truth. If all the people watching this video help one or two people a week to see the light, then the whole nonsense will be over before you can say nonsense. This channel has not been monetized. I haven't authorized any ads and there's no sponsorship. If you'd like to see more videos from me, please subscribe to my channel because they're not always easy to find. Although it may feel like it at times, please remember you're not on your own. More and more people are waking up. I firmly believe that together we will win this fight. And remember, distrust the government, avoid mass media and fight the lies. Thank you for watching.